Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at a circle and find the moment of inertia for a circle where we have the center mass at the origin. Here we're going to look at a semicircle and here we're going to look at a quarter circle. Of course at this point the center mass is no longer at the origin and the center mass is not at the origin here as well. But here we can see that because of complete symmetry, if we rotate the circle about the x-axis or we rotate the circle about the y-axis, we should get the exact same moment of inertia because we have the same area distribution. Therefore, the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis should equal the moment of inertia relative to the y-axis. And it turns out it is equal to 1 quarter pi times the radius to the fourth power. Now we'll show you later how we actually derive that equation but for now it's sufficient to just simply say that's what it is and we'll memorize that. Now to find the moment of inertia relative to the origin, which means then now we're going to rotate the circle about the origin like this, what is the moment of inertia for that? And that reminds us of a cylinder rotating on its axis. We should get the same result as if we find the moment of inertia of a cylinder. Well, let's find out if we do. We know that this is going to be equal to the sum of the moment of inertia about the x-axis plus the moment of inertia about the y-axis. So when we add two of those together, we get 1 quarter pi r squared plus 1 quarter pi, oh, not squared, this is still to the fourth power, pi r to the fourth power, we see that this is equal to 1 half pi r to the fourth power. Now that doesn't quite yet look like the moment of inertia of a cylinder, but then when we pull out the area of a circle, we note that this is equal to pi r squared, and then we have an r squared left. Notice that if this was the mass of the object, we get one half the mass times r squared, which would be the moment of inertia of an object, like a circle or a cylinder that has mass. Now before we go to the semicircle, let's do the quarter circle for, first. So now we have a quarter circle rotating about the x-axis in instead of a full circle, which means that the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis or the moment of inertia relative to the y-axis should only be one quarter the moment of inertia of a full circle. So therefore, one quarter of one quarter, that tells us that this is equal to 1 16th pi r to the fourth power. Again, if we pull out a pi r squared, this is equal to 1 16th times pi r squared times r squared or 1 16th the area of a full circle times r squared or if you want to pull out the area of a quarter circle this can then be said to be 1 quarter times 1 quarter the area of a full circle which happens to be the area of a quarter of a circle times r squared, and notice that looks quite a bit the same as what we have over here. This is the area of a full circle times one half r squared, the area of a quarter circle. Oop, I should not look at this one, I should look at this one right here. So we have one quarter the area of a quarter circle r squared, one quarter the area of a full circle times r squared. So let's write that down. One half times pi r squared times r squared. So you can see the similarity, Oop. and of course that should be one-fourth, the similarity between those two equations. Now to find of course the moment of inertia relative to the origin, we simply add these two together, i sub x plus i sub y, which is equal to 1 16th, the area of a full circle, times r squared plus 1 16th, the area of a full circle times r squared, which is 1 8, the area of a full circle times r squared, or we can write as 1 8 times pi r squared times r squared. Now let's go take a look at how to find the moment of inertia of a semicircle. Now I did seem to indicate here that i sub x is equal to i sub y. The moment of inertia about the x-axis should be the same as the moment of inertia about the y-axis. I said, well, is that symmetric? Does that really make sense? Well, let's go ahead and do it for the x-axis first, and then we'll see that that is indeed the same as the moment of inertia about the y-axis. For the x-axis, it should be half the moment of inertia of a full circle, because we only have a half a circle. 
So that means that this is going to be equal to 1 8 pi r squared. But why would that be the same for the moment of inertia around the y-axis? Well, if you take a quarter circle along and you come over here, then you realize for a quarter circle it will be 1 16th pi r to the fourth power. And I keep writing squared. Of course, not squared, it's to the fourth power. So if we take a look at the quarter circle, it's 1 16th pi r to the fourth. So if you have two quarter circles rotating about the y-axis, it should be twice this, or 1 8 pi r to the fourth, which is exactly what we have over here. And again, if you want to pull out a complete circle area, you get 1 8, the area of a complete circle, times r squared, which is 1 8 pi r squared times r squared. And to find the moment of inertia of this relative to the origin, then you can say that this is equal to the sum of the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis plus the sum plus the moment of inertia relative to the y-axis, which is 1 8 pi r to the fourth plus 1 8 pi r to the fourth, which is equal to 1 quarter pi r to the fourth, which of course is half of what we got over here when we did it for a full circle. So you can see all you need to do is when you go from a full circle to a half circle to a quarter circle, you take all the results you got for the full circle, divide it by two to get the results for a half circle, divide by two again to get the results of a quarter circle. And that's how it's done.